At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce today's commencement speaker. Mr. James White is the Executive Director of Covenant House, New Jersey. And as such, he is well known to the many Green Knights who have supported the Covenant House Solidarity Sleepout here at St. Joe's over the past four years. Mr. White attended St. Francis Preparatory High School, where he was introduced to the Franciscan spirituality and responsibility to serve the poor. He went on to attend Mercy College in Dobbs Ferry, New York, where he uh, received the Wall Street Journal Award as Outstanding Business Student. After receiving a scholarship, he began to pursue his MBA at Long Island University. Jim decided to give back, so he came to Covenant House in 1982 as a full-time volunteer uh, in early 19, uh, I'm sorry, in early 1987, even as he pursued his career in finance with Bear Stearns. There he advanced to a government T-bill trader. In 1992, he returned to his true passion and was hired as Executive Director of Covenant House, New Jersey. During the next 15 years, he grew that organization's budget 10 times to close to $8 million and expanded residential services to over 1,000 homeless youth annually. In 2006, Jim was asked to take the position of Chief Operating Officer for Covenant House International, and there he provided oversight programs in six countries, serving over 50,000 homeless youth each year. He is also the co-founder of Casa Alazanza, a program for trafficked young girls in Guatemala City. In September of 2014, he returned home again to serve as Executive Director of Covenant House, New Jersey, and he recently co-authored the largest ever study on trafficked youth in the country. Our mission statement proclaims our intention to develop young men who will lead ethically, serve generously, and emulate humbly the example of our patron, St. Joseph. Mr. White is clearly someone who has lived that mission and whose work reminds us of our essential responsibility to serve God by serving others. Please join me in welcoming Mr. James White. Thank you all. Thank you, President Donnelly, Principal Bruno, Board of Trustees, faculty, graduates, families, and friends. Great day. Great day. Congratulations to the class of 2017. You look good. Maybe because you have that green to cover the, the schmutz on your shirt. I don't know. <laughs> You know, I've been coming to events here at St. Joe's for over 15 years. I've been to the basketball games, some, some football games, uh, some baseball. Uh, I've been to the tremendous theater program that's here and listened to the choir. And uh, we also did a sleep out here. This is the first high school in the country that did the sleep out. And they also are the leading uh, school in the country for fundraising. They've had over 300 young men sleep out over the past four years in solidarity with homeless children, and they've raised over $100,000. So thank you for that. So now when I come to St. Joe's, I play a little game. And you might want to play along too. Maybe you parents have played it too. Do you know that game, Where's Waldo? You know that one where you gotta find the guy with the glasses and the red hat? So I play um, Where's Barry Donnelly? And uh, President Donnelly is always here, but he's usually in the back, he's in the corner. Uh, at the theater program, he stands in the right of the, the left or the right, you gotta pay attention and find him, but he's always here. At the sleep out, he puts them to bed, and then sure enough, he wakes up in the neck, and he's there already with bagels. So uh, you can play Where's Barry? I play it. It's a tremendous game, um, and it's a lot of fun, uh, but he's always there. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank him for his commitment to this school, to this loyalty, to this mission. So I was honored to be asked to come here tonight or today, and I thought, what, what, what could I give to the, to the students here? What, what would you really want? What is something that you really could use? Money. There it is. Get your purse out, Grandma. Money. So uh, I am going to give you money. Um, it's not to give back to your parents for the tuition. This is yours to keep. Stay with me. So I have four little kids, and as we taught them about money, they would put the pennies out, and we'd put out five pennies, and what would that make? And that would be a nickel. And they'd say, 
If you have five cents or five senses, they would say, makes a nickel. So senses. So what I've given you guys, so don't get too excited, this isn't gonna pay for anything going to college. You have seven pennies or seven senses, seven senses that'll be given to you today. There's a basket in the back that looks like this. And St. Joe's has really been the one who's given you these senses. And we want you from St. Joe's to keep them, to take care of them, to nurture them. They've been gifts that have been given. The first sense or penny or sense is a sense of appreciation, a sense of appreciation. I've been working at homeless kids for the last 35 years. They have a horrific life. Most of them have been tortured. Many of them have had sexual and physical abuse. The people who committed to love them, their parents, have abandoned them. I was blessed to spend some time with Mother Teresa. She had met our kids at Covenant House, and she told me, she said, their poverty is their aloneness. You don't have that. Look around. The love that you have as your brothers in green and your family and friends, you are not alone. Much has been given to you your education, your health, the good people around you, a vision, hope, education ahead, support from behind, lucky you. So this sense of appreciation is one that we hope you start the day with, that you understand and you start the day with wind in your sails because you have been given so much and too much is given, much is asked. So we hope that you take that penny, that sense of appreciation, and use that throughout your life. You've been taught that here at St. Joe's. The, the second penny, or the second sense, um, is a sense of humor. We, we, I heard you guys humming during the song. You got a sense of humor. You need, you need to have that, a little ability to laugh a little bit, right? The Navajo Indians say this, a young man, who cannot cry is a savage, and an old man who cannot laugh is a fool. So we hope that you can laugh. We hope that you can not take things so seriously in life. Don't take yourself so seriously in life. Today in our world, many of your contemporaries in the world have tremendous levels of anxiety and fear and tremendous pressure to go to school. Many of you are already talking about a job. Relax, chill, giggle, laugh. It's okay. I remember my first job, I went in for an interview, and I was going in, and uh, I was sitting down, the person was interviewing me, this beautiful girl there next to me, so she was the secretary, and he would ask a question, and I would answer to her, but then I'd smile at her over here. And then he would say yes, and I'd answer his question, and I said, isn't that clever, and we did this. Thing. So I went through the interview process. I did pretty well. So I was about to leave and I thanked the man for interviewing me and I turned to the secretary and I said, I, I hope I see you again. And I worked, walked out and I walked into the closet. <laughs> so I'm standing in the closet and I open up the door and I come out. This, the guy is just laughing. She's a, going from red to avocado. I'm standing there and I just, I, tell, I said, I really wanted to just see where I'm going to hang my coat when I get the job. Yeah. So you got to have a sense of humor, right? Things are going to be okay. Giggle. I think here at St. Joe's, we've taught you that. You've learned that here. It's important. The next sense is a sense of self. We think that it's really important that you know who you are. Here at St. Joe's, we've spent a lot of time, they have the faculty and, the, and the, I feel like we, I can say we, can I? That we've spent a lot of time helping you to think about many things outside of you, but also who you are. The religious program here is so dynamic and the retreats that you go on, who are you in the world? Who are you invited to be? And I know that in the last few months or last year, you guys have been on the promotion business, right? You're writing your resume, your applications to school, how wonderful you are, taking a little thing you did in the club and helping making it a little bigger maybe, right? So it's a lot of promotion. And that's important to know the goodness in yourself. But this penny, this sense of self has another side. 
We're all human. We all have frailty. We're all in a bit broken. We learn that in our faith. And so it's important to name and to know that too, and to be kind to it. It what makes us human. And if we hold it long enough, it makes us humble. And we understand that we are brothers and sisters in this world. So know yourself, that never ends. Plato says an unreflected life is not worth living. Reflect, take the time to see who you are and who you're being invited to in the world with both your strengths and your challenges. We think it's also important as green knights, as knights, that you have a sense of honor. This is the bedrock of character. It is the quality that empowers you as green knights to exemplify the ultimate in ethical and moral behaviors. As a knight at St. Joe's, you're challenged and called to live in a very difficult world and not to lie and not to cheat and not to steal, to respect all human dignity and to have respect and concerns for each other. To be a knight, to be a knight, you must have honor. The next sense is a sense that sometimes they say is not too common. It's common sense. The world that you're working in now, the world that you'll be stepping into, it won't be as structured. You won't be told where to wear, where to go, what to do, what to say, how to stand. You're going to be given a lot of freedom. And so you need to have that common sense, that sense to perceive the world and make good decisions good decisions. Every decision has consequences. A bad decision can have a real painful one. And so you must be mindful, right, aware of yourself, but you got to use your head. Use your head. There's a lot of things going to go on in the world and you're not going to have your mom or St. Joe's there to tell you what to do or your dad to direct you. You've been given your internal compass now and you need to use common sense and sense of honor. The next sense is a sense of hope. We all need to be filled with a spirit of hope. And what happens often in life, if you're like me or the rest of the people in this room, your sense of hope will be challenged. You will have dark days. There will be days when the clouds are dark and you're not sure if there's a sun behind the clouds. But we hope and know, we hope that you continue to have that hope that beyond you, beyond you, is a great life ahead and that you are held in God's hands. So hope is a real essential element of what we're doing. So we have a, a sense of appreciation, right? A sense of humor, common sense, a sense of honor, a sense of self and a sense of hope. Here's the seventh sense, the seventh penny in the bag. This is the penny that sometimes when you're at Starbucks, you know, you're going and you kind of throw it in the bucket. It's the penny that may be in the back seat of your car or in the cushions of your couch. It's one that sometimes we're not mindful of, we're not reverent to or respectful of. And this is the sense of others. Here at St. Joe's, you've learned to be brothers to each other, to care for each other, to include others that are different than you, to be part of something extraordinary, this Green Knight community. They did a study at Harvard. They tried to figure out what's the key to happiness. It's the longest sociological study there is. It's over 70 years. And what they did was they figured out what happiness is, both in physical, mind, body, and spirit. They figured out what that was. They're smart there. And then they took kids from the south side of Boston and kids who graduated uh, from Harvard. And they followed it for 50 years. And they did deep analysis regularly. And they were trying to figure out the key to happiness. They found it. One thing. Health, money, it didn't matter. Throughout the study, the consistent message of their own happiness, people who lived longer, joyous, happy, healthy lives, they had meaningful relationships in their life. That was it. They were the ones who found happiness. 
who are about others. You've been taught that here at St. Joe's. You've been invited as brothers in the Green Knight tradition to look out for the other guy. You've been invited through the community services and the projects that they've done here to be outside and be part of the community. This is the great gift of being about others in my life. You know, I, I worked on Wall Street and I left Wall Street, honestly, because I really wasn't very good at it. But also what happened, I found it was Sunday afternoon at 12 o'clock, right before the jet game, I had a pit in my stomach because I knew what I had to do and go back to work. It really wasn't for me. Now it is for many people, but for me, I think I was called to something different, to be about others. And so I went back to Covenant House, I got my MSW, and I've been serving there ever since. And Sunday comes, and I watch the Jets lose. <laughs> right? I know, go Giants. <laughs> but Sunday comes, and I'm excited. I'm thrilled to be part of something bigger than myself, to somehow, through God's grace, maybe, maybe be a reflection of his love to the young people that we get to serve. So be about others. It is the Green Knight legacy. You've been taught it, you've been shown it, and you have to step outside of yourself and be there for others. So those are the seven senses that St. Joe's has given you. And I know they've given you a lot more, a ton, a ton more. But these are the seven that I've been able to identify and see uh, in the lives of students here at St. Joe's. But don't forget this one thing too. These seven senses, appreciation, sense of humor, common sense, a sense of honor, a sense of self, a sense of hope, and then a sense of others. It's all wrapped up in faith, in faith. I know it's the faculty's deep desire and prayer who are extraordinary people who've committed their lives, who could do different things, but they're here in the hopes that you get to see the goodness, the godness in you, and you're challenged and called to see the goodness and the God in others, in faith. This is what this institution hopes you get most. Of all the gifts that you'll get, there's many pennies that you've all experienced, many senses, many gifts that you've been given. Don't forget what they're fully wrapped in, and that will never go away. The love of your God to you, and the invitation to get to know him deeper. You know, you've been asked to come to church every month or mass every month here. You've been engaged and forced almost to go to religious classes and programs. That's over. Now it is your time, your invitation, to continue the development of your own faith, your own relationship with God. We hope you take this, all the gifts, but this most importantly, to your next venture and to your next uh, chapter in life. So today, your graduating Green Knights, take courage, take courage you noble knights, the road ahead can be unclear and rocky, but never forget that you've been entrusted with so many gifts, so many beautiful senses that can be utilized. Remain faithful servants. Share them with the world and make it a better place. Pray for me and my work at Covenant House and to the thousands of kids who haven't been as blessed as you. Pray for them, pray for me and I will pray for you on your journey. God bless you.